Coming up in today's show, we look back at all the drama from the round of 16 clashes. Show you the top 10 plays. Plus, look ahead to the quarterfinal pairings. Oh, what a play by Evans! Fidmar throws it down. Look at Ray! She goes up for three. It's good! It's good! What a way to end the regular season. It was an unfamiliar feeling for AS Monaco going into their clash with Zilona Gora in Poland. They were coming into a game on the back of a loss. Defeat to Pinar Kasiaka last time out saw them finish with a 13-1 regular season record, but they showed no signs of letting that affect them. They opened up a 23-point lead in the first half, but after the break, it was a different story. Martinez Gecevicius getting hot and dragging his side back into the encounter. And with 20 seconds left, that huge Monaco lead was no more. Follows it up and ties it! Remarkable! What grit! It was left to Gerald Robinson to give the French side something to show for their efforts. Robinson gets it right at the break and gets it to go in. Something out of nothing. Incredible. A two-point lead a lot tighter than they would have expected from their first half showing. It's a little bit disappointing after the first game because uh, we knew we could have made our life a lot easier if we had a big margin uh, coming into home. So, I mean, we blew a 23-point lead um, and ended up being just a two-point victory. But in the game of basketball, so you just win the game. You don't have to worry about the point difference and things like that. So our main goal is just to go win every game. So the Polish side travelled to the south of France, knowing they'd have to do what no other team had done in the BCL, beat Monaco at home. Despite this, the Polish side held their own in the opening quarter, Getchevicius once again finding his shot from outside the arc. But from then on, Monaco turned up the heat, showing why they are so formidable at home. And now Lacombe in the open floor, the alley-oop pass! There it is again! Good heavens, Chris Evans. In the end, it was a convincing victory for the home side, winning by 30 points to seal a spot in the last eight for the second year running. In the second leg, honestly, I had no doubt that we would win. At home, we, we succeed all the time to, to play like, uh, like an army. All the time, five players go on the bench, five come, not uh, under level. It's like we, we go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Having come so close to taking it all last year, Banvit got their second BCL playoff campaign underway with a trip to Nanterre. The knockout rounds are new to the French side and they were made to pay in the first half as the visitors went into the break in the lead. Gasper Vidmar was part of the team that took Banvit to the final last season. Oh, spin move! Vidmar! Oh, goodness gracious! What about the spin move from the Jolly Green Giant? And his 18 points on the night helped them to a slender advantage from the first leg. With the Bandiema crowd in full force, Banvit knew it would be a tough atmosphere for their opponents. But it was the visitors who came out the stronger. Nanterre quickly out of the blocks to pile on the pressure in the first quarter. There he is, dribbling up high. He's going to fly in. There he goes. But Banvit's experience showed. They were 39-30 ahead by half time after a storming second quarter. And he goes inside again. Hazer lays it up and in. Nanterre rallied in the third, but the Turkish side were just too strong over two legs. Adonis Thomas particularly impressive with 15 points and nine rebounds. Thomas and the slam dunk. We play uh, very hard. We, uh, we locked in on some of their key guys and uh, we, we wanted to keep the lead the entire game. This setting up a clash with familiar foes AS Monaco in the quarterfinals. The last meeting between these two sides marked a game Monaco fans won't long forget. Uh, Benvi took uh, Monaco out of the semi-final in the final four 
And uh, of course, it's something that's going to be remembered. We can't let that happen again this year, and we have to be focused. We'll be looking for um, our revenge. Of course, we, we want to make it to the Final Four like them, and uh, the fact that we go back against them, I think it's a sign uh, of the gods. <laughs> On that winning bandit side was Gaspar Vidmar, but he knows his side will now face a very different challenge. Monaco had a great team last year and also a great team this year. They've shown uh, through the, uh, the whole of this championship league that they're a very tough team. I think we have to be very focused. But they have great players, great athletes. I think uh, most important we're just playing our defense and like last game try and help each other and just go on. But the newcomers to both sides know that this will be a hard-fought battle. Uh, we expect uh, maybe the most difficult game of our season will be. One of the best teams in France, if not the best right now. So they have a really good team, good roster, and they, they play a good brand of basketball. Their team is used to winning. All knowing a final four spot awaits the winners. It's a new year, new players, new, a lot of new things. We must like play our game and we can beat them if we can do it. Uh, I want us to come out and compete very hard. Uh, it's going to be a very big challenge for us. It's going to be a, it's going to be a great test for our team, and uh, we're we're up to it, and we definitely want to get to the final four. Czech champions Ches Nimborg travelled to Greece to face Ike in their round of 16 tie, with good memories of their last visit to the country. They beat Aris in Thessaloniki, and after a slow start, they eventually found their touch in Athens. Kendrick Ray checks back into the game, in the middle. Ray, oh my lord! Kendrick Ray! And it was Kendrick Ray that continued to impress on the night. His 30 points was the highest ever scored in the last 16. The best last season being Mike Green for Pinar Kasiaka. Now playing for Ike, he had to watch his record disappear. Nimborg finished the night with a 10-point lead to take into the second leg. I mean, it was just within the offense today, you know, and then t t my shots was falling today, so the coach kept coming to me, and, and, I, was, and I couldn't miss today. The odds were against Ike as they travelled to the Czech Republic. And with the home side 68-64 up after the third quarter, Ike were 14 points behind on aggregate and looking down and out. Bahatchik, got it by Mike Green. Oh, it's a good play, but oh, it's a beautiful play. Bahatchik just lays it off to Martin Krizh, who just lays it up. But in an unbelievable fourth quarter, Ike Athens stormed to a 90-82 lead thanks to Manny Harris scoring an astonishing 36 points on the night. Manny Harris, no rebounders, got to make it, and he does just that. With the score set at 180 to 178 to Nimborg, Prague was set for celebrations, when with just two seconds remaining, Kevin Punter stunned the crowd. Mike Green kicks it out. Punter, three, oh baby, oh baby! Kevin Punter, big three, takes the lead. Well, holy moly, just when you thought it was over, what a three-pointer. That shot securing Ike's spot in the quarterfinals. A packed house in Klaipeda welcomed Strasbourg as they took on Neptunus in the first leg of their round of 16 tie. And those home fans were treated to an excellent shooting performance from Thomas Delininkaitis as they looked to claim the advantage in the tie. He scored 19 on the night with five threes. Now the long jump shot is good and the foul after opening up a lead in the first half, Neptunus had to survive a Strasbourg fight back to head to France with a five-point advantage. With the Strasbourg crowd in full voice, the home side were hoping to overturn the deficit. But early on, Neptunus had other ideas. An impressive first-half performance from Edgara Cialonis, helping Neptunus take a 20-point lead into the break. And the drive and the dog from Delionis. Strasbourg looked down and out, but after half time, they fought back. 
A phenomenal second half saw them claw back the deficit and force the game into overtime. Inglis spins, gets in, puts it up and in! They've called the foul! Strasbourg had all the momentum going into the extra period and took full advantage. After David Logan's three-pointer put them clear, they never looked back and wrapped up the victory in style. Now the steal! Boss is going to go in for the dunk! This win setting up a quarter-final clash with Ike. It will be a familiar matchup for both sides, having faced each other in the group stages. Strasbourg got a narrow two-point win when they hosted Ike on game day five. Takes it in, spins, pulls up, and he's fouled and he scores! That's unbelievable! By Zach Wright! And a fantastic win for SIG Strasbourg. The reverse on game day 12 saw another marginal win for the French side, clinching victory by a single point. To Louis Labry. Labry, that's way too easy. Strasbourg have done it. Both sides will be hoping their two informed men will stay hot by the time the quarterfinals come around. Ike's Manny Harris's record-breaking 36 points meant he had a combined 61 across the round of 16. While that strong second leg performance of 21 points saw Strasbourg's Danny Inglis total 34. And it's a game that has divided opinion on the likely winners. It's a tough one. All right, let's see this, Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Strasbourg, uh, they're, uh, they're calm under pressure. I think Strasbourg, a favorite. Well coached, play well together. Uh, talented. And I know the coach, and the coach is really good, so I think Strasbourg will beat uh, Ike. I think Ike has a little bit more experience. But Ike shows some incredible things in the beginning. The, so, be careful for Strasbourg. I think Ike has the reputation for, for coming through in big games. Still to come in today's show, we wrap up the remaining round of 16 games. Show you the top 10 best plays and look ahead to what to expect from the remaining quarterfinals. Thessaloniki played host to the first leg of this tie as Pinar Kasiaka made the journey to Greece from Turkey. Pauk looked to be making their home advantage count. They were 19 ahead at one point in the second half. Jackson, the little short roll, rests a couple and throws it down. That lead was a little slender come full time, though. A spirited fight back seeing Kasiaka return home six points behind. Uh, when we go to Turkey, we definitely got to take care of the ball. And we just got to compete. You know, that's a great team. Uh, they, they have a lot of great shooters, a lot of great players on that team. But we just got to continue playing together and playing as a team, and, and everything can take care of itself. That's important because it's not about one game. You got to play 80 minutes. You got to finish strong, and we know that since Oasis, so we just wanted to make it as close as possible. When Pauk visited Turkey and saw the passionate Kasiaka crowd, they knew they faced a battle to hang on to that lead. The host started strong on their home court. Three is gone and buried on the ball reversal. An excellent first half saw them go in at the break, four points ahead on aggregate. Oh! Jared Jones just posterizes Margaritas. But Pauk didn't give up, getting that aggregate lead down to just one point by the end of the third. Kasiaka kept their composure in the fourth to wrap up victory. Jared Jones, the star on the night, picking up 24 points, including nine rebounds. Great work by Jones. Who else would it be? Our fans were amazing tonight. They came out and really gave us extra energy and boost. We didn't want to, you know, leave anything on the court, any extra energy. We, we just uh, locked in on defense and knew that's what was going to win the game. Defending champions Iberostar Tenerife faced a familiar opponent as they travelled to Mercia for an all-Spanish clash. Although the BCL newcomers were clearly not intimidated, as it remained close throughout the first half. Tenerife looked to pull away after the break, 
but two late three-pointers from Vitor Benite helped cut the advantage to just five going into the second leg. Benite for three, knocks it down, tough shot. We wanted to get it as close as uh, possible at the end of this game. They were up by 11 points with like one minute to go, and we got it down to five. So, I mean, we accomplished our goal in the last two minutes of the game. We're going to their place, and we're going to be ready to play. Mercia knew they'd have to be just the second team in this season's BCL to beat Tenerife at home to progress. The hosts started the strongest, increasing their lead to eight points on aggregate by the end of the first quarter. He picks up where he left off last week, dominant on the inside. But in the second quarter, Mercia sprang to life, outscoring their opponents by 10 and taking a two-point advantage on aggregate into the break, thanks to Ovi Soko. Halfway line, he's good! Strong defence from the visitors helped to maintain their lead in the second half and they didn't let it slip. Oh, what a block! So a huge shock as Ucam Mercia knock out the champions at home, booking their place in the quarterfinals against Pinar Karsiaka. Pinar Karsiaka and Ucam Mercia came out of Group A of the regular season and are now reunited in the playoffs. Back in game day five, the Turkish side clinched a five-point overtime win in Spain. And the reverse on game day 12 was a similar story, as Kasiaka were victorious by seven points. The Jones will surely finish this game. The Spanish side will have it all to do defensively if they are to cause another big upset. Their Turkish opponents were the joint best scorers in the BCL during the regular season, with just over 85 a game, while Mercia sat at just over 78 points per game. Here's more predictions from our experts. I think it's going to be a, a tough game uh, for both teams. You got two different types of styles of play. Mercy just beat Tenerife, so, uh, and they got they got the best of us twice, so I'll go with them. It'll be a good one. I have to go with Marcia. I played with uh, Ovi Soko in the summer with the GB team, so I got to root with uh, my British brother. If Kasiaka has the one home advantage, I'll go with Kasiaka. I think uh, when Kashaka, when they're playing at home with their fans, it's very hard to beat them there on their home court. It's very, very tough and difficult to win at that gym in Turkey. They have a lot of fans, a lot of noise. It gets noisy. They have good players in uh, Jerry Jones and Kennedy. I think it's more Karsaka, but it will be tough for sure. German affair as MHP Reason and Ever Air Baskets faced off in their round of 16 tie. The first leg took place in Oldenburg, but it was Reason who dominated. They exploded to a 14 point lead in the first quarter. Sears does really well to hold on and then just flushes it for fun. Before going even better in the fourth, outscoring Ever Air by 16 in the final quarter, they picked up a 25 point victory the biggest away win in BCL playoff history. Ever Air Baskets knew they had to break that record themselves if they had any hope of qualifying when they traveled to Ludwigsburg. It was a close first half, but despite a strong performance from Mickey McConnell before the break. McConnell behind the back, fires the three, it's high, it's off the glass, it's good. Ever Air Baskets were unable to get the lead they vitally needed. A solid team performance from MHP continued to keep the visitors at bay. Sears spins and goes high to throw it down. Out of nothing, Justin Sears. And despite a strong final quarter from Ever Air Baskets, the 12 point win wasn't enough. And MHP Rees and Ludwigsburg sealed their spot in the next round. They're a great team and they're going to come out and give it their all in the second leg. So we just came out and we kept playing and competing to the very end. And they're a really good team, but it was a goal of ours to make it to the quarterfinals. When Medi by Reut welcomed Besiktas to Germany, it saw a team who finished fourth in their group take on a side who finished first. But the table-topping Turks struggled in the first leg as the host took an early lead and on the back of a perfect shooting performance from Damon Brooks. Damon Brooks going really strong and he flexes his muscles. And 20 points from Gabe York. Kick back out, York. Oh my goodness, 
The German side showed that regular season form counts for nothing in the playoffs as they kept their advantage to hold a five-point lead ahead of their trip to Istanbul. All eyes were now on Besiktas to make up the difference at home. The Turkish side were knocked out at this point last season and their opponents didn't make it easy for them, by Reut holding their own. DJ Strawberry had an impressive night for the hosts as they went into the half with the aggregate deficit down to three. But once again, up stepped Gabe York to keep the lead for the German side. York for three, good! Another one! 60 to 53, Mini Beirut on top in the second leg. And once Nate Linhart drained this vital basket. Puts it up from three. Oh! The shot hurt all the way back in Germany. It became too much for the home side to recover. A tied game seeing Besiktas knocked out, while Medi Bayreuth took their place in the quarterfinals in their first season in the competition. It always feels good to make history. We got a great team, we got a great coaching staff, and we were all meshed together as great. That win for Bayreuth means there will be another all-German clash in the quarterfinals. They now line up against MHP Ries and Ludwigsburg, a team that already has an impressive league win over Bayreuth this season, a 78-47 victory back in December. They had a tough, tough game against us. We played hard and I think they, were, they didn't expect the level of intensity we had. They uh, moved the ball really well and uh, they had some, some skilled post guys. It's gonna be a dog fight out there. It's uh, two German teams clash with the BBL. It's gonna come down to a couple key plays, but we're a pretty confident group that we're gonna come up with. We're, we're right where we want to be. We're about to reach uh, some of the goals we set out at the start of the year, so we just got to push through. And it'll be gritty. I know they'll uh, want to come out and get some revenge for the last game. We got them uh, pretty good here at home, so uh, I think it'll be a pretty good contest. Reason will be hoping to have Dwayne Evans on top form. He's their top point scorer, averaging over 13 a game. But Medi by Royt have a star man of their own, Gabe York. He's fifth in scoring across the whole league, with almost 18 a game. And here's what the players think of this matchup. Ooh. This is this is this is tough because these two teams play outstanding basketball. It's gonna be a tough a tough game for both teams because they already they know each other uh, very well. Ludis will play really well and uh, Beirut is <laughs> just winning, so really for me it's 50-50. So here's a reminder of all the quarterfinal matchups. The first legs taking place on the 27th and 28th of March, with the second legs tipping off the following week on the 3rd and 4th of April. And now coming in, another rejection, this one by Lilani. Big Cody. McConnell behind the back. Fires the three, it's high, it's off the glass. Tabunas gets rejected out of bounds. And now the rejection. Triore, the rim protector. And the drive and the dog from Zelionis. Jared Jones just posterizes Margaritas. And Bathas going up. He's blocked from the weak side. Huge block. Halfway line. He's good! Oh, he's so goal from the halfway line. Sears spins and goes high to throw it down. Out of nothing, Justin Sears. Quick hands from T.J. Cooper, takes it away. Behind the back, pass! Put it on the highlight reel. Finished by Rudis. Mike Green kicks it out. Punta, three. Oh, baby! Kevin Punta, big three, takes the lead. Well, holy moly, just when you thought it was over, what a three-pointer! Coming up on the next Basketball Champions League show, we look at all the quarterfinal action and get ready for the final four. Welcome to the big time, young fella. We know who you are now. This time, Sears finishes it off. Put it on the highlight reel. 
Halfway line. He's good! Well, holy moly, just when you thought it was over, 